Students of the Homestead High School Class of 2021, welcome to your senior year and congratulations on making it to this point. This video will provide an overview of important information you'll need to be aware of to ensure you have a successful year and are able to achieve your post-secondary goals. I'm Mrs. Edwards and I'm one of the senior counselors on the Homestead High School Counseling Team. Please know you can always reach out to your specific school counselor with questions following this video. The first thing I'd like to talk to you about is senior meetings. You will be having a meeting with your assigned counselor at some point over the next few months. You will not need to request an appointment for this meeting. If you do not see your counselor by around the end of October, please feel free to reach out to her via email or put in a request to see her at that point in time. Otherwise, please expect your counselor to reach out to you to schedule your senior meeting prior to that date. You are always welcome to reach out to your counselor, however, if you have a specific question or concern that requires a timely response. As, an, as a Homestead High School student, you have a number of resources at your fingertips. I'd like to walk you through how to access these today. We'll start by reviewing the guidance webpage and then we'll take a look at Canvas. So if you go to our guidance website, you'll notice that we have a tab at the top for guidance and there are a number of different options to go through. So you can scroll down and see there's information um, that mirrors what's on the menu on the left-hand side. So if we go back up to the top guidance tab and you can scroll through, you'll see again, financial aid information, ACT, SAT, scholarships, and that's what we're going to look at further today. There are sub tabs for scholarships, both general and collegiate. If you look at the collegiate scholarship listings, which is what we'll start with, that will take you to a page of our most popular post-secondary institutions. Clicking on one of these would take you to a scholarships and financial aid page for that particular university. As you're looking through your colleges of interest, please consider checking out these opportunities as most colleges will offer incoming freshmen various opportunities at their specific university. We can now go back to general scholarships. This would be where we would post any scholarships that we are aware of that would be something we'd like you to apply to. It's a great way to review different opportunities that are available. And as you go through, this is a Google Doc that is updated regularly. You can find information regarding eligibility, application deadlines, and typically the application will be linked right there. So we would encourage you to check this regularly as scholarships will continue to be posted as we receive them. So please be sure again, going to the guidance website, clicking on the scholarships tab, and then again, this page is specifically on general scholarship information. It's a great way to find resources to help you pay for your college. So we'll go ahead and go back now that we've looked at scholarships and we will also go through and um, look at the other resources that are available on this website. So again, going back through, we'll go back up to the top and you'll find that you can go through to look at um, transcript information. There's also um, information that kind of talks through um, back up at the top, um, ACT, SAT testing, the counselor recommendation form, um, which you can see there. And then you can also um, scroll down further and that's where we'll find transcripts. The counselor recommendation form, that's where you would fill out information if you want your counselor to write a letter for you. Transcripts, um, again, as you're filling out your application, um, colleges will need to see your high school transcript and you'll quickly be able to click on transcripts there and then there's a link allowing you to order your transcript directly from Parchment, which is a great opportunity um, to kind of get it there free of charge. Um, some of you may have already used Parchment when you've um, signed up for dual credit classes. If you have, you know it's a very easy process. If you have not, um, you'll simply click on the new learner account there in the center and order your transcript. There's also a quick step-by-step -step guide um, that kind of walks you through the process of how you order your transcript and where to go. Um, again, um, just a very easy process and something you'll want to take care of sooner rather than later. We'll also go ahead um, and take a look as we get out of the um, quick start guide 
um, we'll go ahead and take a look too at different resources that are available to students on Canvas. Um, if you go to the Homestead High School Class of 2021 page and you select Modules, you'll be able to scroll down and see um, all of the different resources here. So dual credit information for Ivy Tech, dual credit information for Purdue-Fort Wayne, for Ball State, for Indiana University Bloomington, um, and then lots of other information. As you can see, great resources here. Um, if you've gone all the way uh, to the bottom, that's where you will find the student services modules. And this mirrors what we just reviewed on the Homestead High School website. So again, that counselor information sheet, which is what you would want to fill out if you're going to ask your counselor to write you a letter of recommendation, scholarships information as we just reviewed, information pertinent to financial aid transcripts, testing, um, and then also work permit, and then other commonly asked questions that you'll want to kind of check out. So again, a great resource. And again, you will find that it does mirror um, what you would also find on the Homestead High School website. So when in doubt, if you have a question, please know you can always reach out to your counselor, um, but you can also you know, check out the website, check out Canvas to get some questions answered that way. Next, we're going to talk about SAT and ACT testing. The dates for future test administrations are found in Canvas modules and on our website. You will register for these tests on the specific testing agency's website. So for the SAT, you will register at collegeboard.org. And for the ACT, you will register at actstudent.org. Your school counselor will not be able to sign you up for these tests. If you do qualify for a fee waiver, this would be if you receive free or reduced lunch or are a 21st century scholar, please be sure to request a fee waiver from your counselor when you meet with them. You can use this when you register for these tests. You are given three excused days this school year for college visits. This is a great opportunity for you, whether you are in the beginning stages of your college search or you are trying to narrow down your list of top contenders. Due to COVID-19 precautions, I do want to make sure you are aware that some college campuses are not offering in-person visits. However, most campuses will offer a virtual visit option, so be sure to research what those opportunities look like. If you miss class time for a visit, please provide a note or form from an admissions representative or school official at the college you visited. You'll need to bring this to the attendance office when you return to school to excuse this absence so it can be coded as a college visit. Now let's review the college application process. There are three major components to this, the application, the transcript, and the test scores. We'll start by looking at the application. There are two ways you may apply to your colleges of interest, either directly to the college through their website or by using the Common App. Different schools will have different application requirements, so please be sure to check those thoroughly before you get started. For example, you will not be able to apply to Ball State University through the Common App as they don't accept this, while other schools you're applying to may all utilize the Common App. If schools utilize the Common App, you will only apply to them through this platform. You will not need to also apply through the school's website. Deadlines are extremely important to be mindful of in the college application process. November 1st is a common priority deadline for placement in a highly competitive program or perhaps to qualify for specific scholarships that a college may offer. Be sure to closely research not only your college's deadlines, but also the deadlines for specific programs and scholarships of interest within the college, as these may differ. All three pieces of your application, the application itself, the transcript, and the test scores, if applicable, need to arrive by the specific deadline posted. The transcript can be submitted to your colleges of interest in a few different ways. If you're applying to colleges using the Common App, you will actually add your counselor under the Colleges tab within the FERPA and Recommenders section. Once you've done this, your counselor will then receive a notification and will upload your transcript for you. However, if you're applying to a college that is not on Common App, or if you're not using Common App, you'll need to request your transcript through Parchment. You'll need to create a Parchment account, and as I showed you earlier, there are easy step-by-step -step directions provided within the Student Services Canvas modules and on our website as we previously reviewed. Please make sure you're not reviewing, or you're not waiting rather, until the last minute 
right before a looming deadline to complete any of these above steps, as each does require either your counselor or the Homestead High School Registrar to upload and or send your transcript. They won't necessarily be able to do this at 11.58 p.m. when the deadline is midnight. Again, all pieces of your application must arrive to their specified end destination by the listed deadline for your full application to be complete. So be sure to allow time for all steps to be completed. Test scores, if included with your application materials, must be sent directly from the testing agency, which would be either College Board for the SAT or ACT for your SAT or ACT. Please plan to allow about two weeks for your scores to be sent. Just like the transcript, please be sure to not procrastinate on this step and cut things too closely to the specified deadline. Please be sure to closely review your college's application requirements as some colleges have moved to test optional for admission for fall of 2021. This does not mean you cannot include test scores if you have them, but it does mean you have the option to not include them. Test optional colleges, however, may still encourage you to include test scores if you have them. If you're considering applying to a college without including test scores, it will be important to have a conversation with an admissions representative from that college and or to closely research what this option looks like at that college before moving forward with that plan. Again, if you are including test scores with your application, your application will not be considered complete if test scores are late. You can either sign up for these scores to be automatically sent to your colleges of interest when you take the test, or you will need to request these scores to be sent to your colleges of interest directly from the testing agency. To do this, you'll need to log back into your college board and or ACT student account, and there will be a link to send your scores. If you elect to send your scores after you've taken the test, there will be a fee associated with this request. This will be around $12 for each test you're sending. Again, it's important to make sure you get that information sent on time. Some colleges will require recommendations, while some don't. Again, it will be your responsibility to check each of your colleges and programs specific application requirements. If you do need a letter of recommendation, please request this from your teacher or counselor at least two weeks in advance of the deadline. Well-written recommendation letters require quite a bit of time and effort. It is very helpful for us to have a completed purple sheet information on file for you should you request this letter. Again, these forms can be found in Student Services on our guidance website and in our Student Services Canvas module. These forms provide information about your academic history, your extracurricular and leadership activities, your volunteer experiences, and many other helpful areas. The first step to ensuring you're able to qualify for financial aid will be to complete the FAFSA. This stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Information from this application will be used in determining any financial need based aid you may qualify for when it comes to paying for college. It will be based on your parents' income and their tax information. FAFSA will be filed online and will open up on October 1st and close on April 15th. We strongly recommend not waiting until April 15th to file your FAFSA. If you or your parents would like more information about this process, we have two financial aid parent nights, one on October 1st and one on February 25th. Both evenings will start at 6.30 p.m. More information about these events will be provided as we approach these dates. Some feedback that we often receive from families at Homestead is that they don't feel it's necessary for them to complete the FAFSA because they don't believe they'll qualify for any financial assistance. While this is a family decision, we typically recommend completing the FAFSA anyway, as some colleges, such as IU, require the FAFSA to be completed even for merit-based scholarships. Scholarships are a great way to receive free money that you won't have to pay back to help cover the cost of your college tuition. Please make sure you're regularly checking the scholarship listings on either our website or through Canvas. A large portion of the scholarship money you will be awarded will be college-specific scholarships from the college you're attending. Because of this, be sure to check your college's scholarships and financial aid page on their website for further information. Some will be automatic and based on your GPA and or test scores, while others will require an application. It's important you do your part to thoroughly research this process. 
If you're completing an online class via BYU, which is often either PE or health, this will need to be completed by December 18th. This will give us time, should something happen where you don't pass the course, to put it in your semester two schedule with us at Homestead High School to make sure you're able to graduate. In the past, students have been unable to walk at graduation because they haven't completed this course in time or they failed the course and we don't want this to happen to you. Again, please be mindful of the December 18th deadline. The next piece I'd like to discuss briefly with you is attendance. Seniors, I know this is a unique year, but please be mindful of your attendance. Please keep in mind that students have 10 parent excused absences for this school year. Whether you are attending class in person, via Zoom, or are completing the ESACS online curriculum, it is of the utmost importance that you are involved and engaged in coursework this year. Okay, last but not least, the moment you've been waiting nearly 13 years for, high school graduation. This will take place Sunday, June 6th at 4 p.m. at the Fort Wayne Memorial Coliseum. There will be a mandatory practice prior to this at approximately 1.15 p.m. Further details about this will be provided as we near this date. You must attend this practice to be able to participate in the ceremony. Spartans, thank you for listening. I hope you have a tremendous senior year, and we look forward to seeing all of our Spartan seniors at graduation on June 6th at the Coliseum.